Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We're talking about FIFA 23. We just had a bunch of brand new information released with the gameplay reveal trailer and the deep dive pitch notes. But what I want to do today is not cover the basics. I want to do a deep dive and look at some of the intricacies of the information that we learned yesterday. Today we're going to talk about a brand new foot transfer market, how that's going to look and how that's going to work. We're also going to talk about brand new foot heroes that are going to get upgraded sooner than they did this last year in FIFA 22, which is a tremendous W and a lot of other information, including a brand new currency inside of FIFA. That's going to be a talking point that we need to learn more about as EA release more information, but we do have some ideas of what that could be already. So we're going to look at all that and more in today's video. If you're excited for FIFA 23, which is right around the corner, hit the thumbs up on this video and subscribe if you're new. Let's go into the information and we like to talk about the market around here, right? So that's what we're going to start by talking with because I think for a lot of people, this is the biggest change so far that we have heard about. Yes, crossplay is cool and we will talk about that, but this is massive, especially for us that watch the market a lot. And it's going to impact everybody because everybody uses the market. We are going to have one massive FIFA 23 transfer market this next year. The two biggest markets already existing are combining into one with all of PlayStation and all of Xbox coming together in one market along with Stadia. And that's going to be one massive market this next year. This was expected. This is what people was, were thinking was going to happen with the addition of crossplay into the game. But it's a little bit different than we thought, right? Because there's still going to be three different markets. But first of all, you're going to have this massive market between PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Next Gen, and Stadia. And basically, this just means exactly as what you think it means. If a player is on Stadia, a PlayStation 4 player will be able to see that same item that the Stadia player listed on the market. So like, I'm on PlayStation 5, I list a player up, somebody on Xbox One, can buy that player. It is one massive market this next year, basically combining these two markets right here between PS and between Xbox and then throwing Stadia into the mix as well. One big massive market. Now, how is this going to change the market? That's a lot of people's biggest question. And we're going to continue to talk about this around and through the summer as we move towards FIFA 23. And this is the example that I came up with yesterday. And this is kind of how I was explaining how I think this is going to feel. This is a list on Footbin of the live number of auctions on all of the, of the three markets that we have right now in FIFA 22. On PlayStation, we have 2 million current listings on the market. On Xbox, we have 600,000. So you can see PlayStation has always been the more sizable market. There's more players on PlayStation. Xbox is the second biggest with 600,000 live transfers. Really, if you would think about it in this way, if I were to add the 600,000 live transfers on Xbox to PlayStation, that would really only increase the amount of listings on PS by a, by a pretty small amount. Maybe like, you know, what would that be, like 20% or something like that? Not super crazy, maybe a little more, but, you know, 600,000 added on to 2 million, that's not that big of an increase. And even if you look at some of the biggest numbers, the biggest number of transfers during the year of FIFA 22 was 9 million on PS and it was 2.8 million on Xbox. So what this is going to do is it's going to add a lot of supply together on the same market. And that has a lot of people thinking, Nate, aren't prices going to be so cheap next year because you have all of Xbox supply and PlayStation supply on the same market? In my opinion, actually, no, I think it's going to be very similar. If you're a player that uses the PlayStation market, I think what it's going to end up being is just like the PlayStation market from this last year. Of course, we don't know how EA is going to do pack weight. Prices were just super cheap this year in FIFA 22 anyway. So that, of course, has a big impact on things. But combining these two markets, really what I think it's going to feel like is a more competitive PlayStation market. Because basically, your prices are, I think going to be around the same as they would have been on the PlayStation market if it was its own separate thing anyway, because the Xbox market is such a good bit smaller than the PlayStation market. Really, what you're going to have is more people trying to buy the same cards, and there's going to be a lot of demand in specific areas. Sniping is going to be much harder this year. Getting deals on bid is going to be much harder this year. And timing fluctuations on the market is going to be a bit more difficult because you're going to have, again, more supply and more demand of just more players fighting for the same cards that before there were two separate markets for people to kind of, you know, fight for cards on, right? Sniping on Xbox, 
you were sniping against Xbox players. Sniping on PlayStation, you were sniping against PlayStation players. So I think that's going to be the biggest difference. But really, I don't think the market's going to feel that much different. Um, I'm really curious to see how SBC fodder works this next year and how, you know, the fodder movements are on the market because I think it's still going to be really similar to PlayStation. Some of you guys on Xbox have bigger fluctuations since there is less supply and still a decent amount of demand at the current moment on Xbox. So I honestly think that the market's not going to be that much different if you're a PlayStation user. And if you're an Xbox user, all I would say is it's just going to be more competitive. There's going to be more cards that are on the game, more cards on the market, but also more people going after them. So that's kind of my take on how I think this transfer market is going to be changed. Again, I don't think there's really much you can prepare for. We'll have to see what it's like when we actually get the game and when we're on it. But that's kind of how I view a one big transfer market pool. But I love this, right? I think this is great for, especially as we talk about prices on the market, we talk about fluctuations in trading. Now we are all, except for PC, we are all on the same level playing field, right? Most people are on Xbox, PlayStation. We are all on the same level playing field. So if I say, yo guys, this price is pretty good for a Derry Miller Tau team of the season, I don't have to try to think about Xbox and PlayStation prices at the same time. It's much nicer just for a like ease of use level accessibility with this is going to be a lot better for market knowledge and for talking about prices on the market that is i'm excited for that when we have you know trading conversations and stuff like that as well now here's the problem i know there was people excited to play pc because the graphics are so much better on pc than they are on xbox and playstation if your pc is pretty good but this is really interesting because PC is going to have their own separate transfer market and the Switch is going to have its own separate transfer market. So we have three markets this year in FIFA, right? PlayStation, Xbox, and uh, PC. We're going to have three markets next year in FIFA 23 as well. They're just going to be completely different. You're going to have one massive market and then two pretty small ones between PC and the Nintendo Switch. And again, this is the most one of the most confusing parts about this all is PC is included in matchmaking with next gen. So if you're a PC player, you're going to be matching up with people on PS5 and Xbox Series X or S, but you won't be on the same market as them or Stadia. That's the weirdest part. I don't know why EA has done this. Um, I feel like they should give us some more information, some more clarity, but also I feel like they might not because the PC player pool is so much smaller than the general public of the you know, Xbox and the PlayStation users that play this game. So that's just kind of a really interesting point, but it's a really big one. And I want to spend some time talking about that uh, because that was a really big change. Now, speaking about gameplay just a little bit, this is the graphic that everybody is showing, and I think it explains it so well. This is how it's going to work this next year. Old gen plays against old gen. New gen plays against new gen. That's the simple sentence of how you need to know matchmaking works in FIFA 23. PS5, Xbox X, and uh, Series S, they play together against Stadia and PC, online and in friend friendlies, and then old gen PS4 and Xbox One will play against each other um, in friendlies as well. That also means that you can still match PS4 to PS4, PS5 to PS5, but you also will have Xbox players thrown in the mix, both on old and new gen. So if you're on like me, somebody on PlayStation 5 or on Xbox um, next gen, you know, right now we actually have multiple versions of the game. I've got the PS5 version of FIFA 22 and the PS4 version, and I can swap back and forth. I would imagine since dual entitlement is advertised again for FIFA 23, that if you have a next gen console, you could go back and forth if you like a certain gameplay better, kind of like I do this year, I like old gen gameplay a little bit better. And I think you'd be able to go back and do that same sort of like switch around if you preferred one of the two gameplays over the other in FIFA 23 as well. So that's kind of how I read this and that's how I understand the whole cross-play platform situation with the next gen and with the old gen. Now, that's a lot of talk about market and things. Let's talk about some content related items. And this is pretty big right here. We have some new foot heroes and we have already released three. Now we've seen a lot of leaks around these, right? And I'm gonna talk about some of the leaks in a second, but these are confirmed from EA Sports. Yaya Torre, Park Ji Sung, and Carvalho three Premier League heroes, and this is the World Cup hero car design right here. I believe this is the World Cup hero car design, and that matters. Take note of that here in just a second. Of course, this last year, 
our hero cards looked entirely different, right? If we go and take a look at uh, Ginola, this is how our hero cards looked. I still think we're going to have our base heroes in FIFA 23. That is the way that it sounds. But as they say in here, Foot 23 heroes are in-game from launch, just like last year. But the biggest part about this is they're adding additional special FIFA World Cup foot hero versions for every Foot 23 hero. So basically at the start of the World Cup, EA is going to upgrade and put new versions of all heroes out in the game, just like they did this year for like the foot captains heroes, right? Or the shapeshifter heroes. These guys finally got upgraded in like April and July on this game. Next year in FIFA 23, they're going to update these within uh, two months of the game coming out. Tremendous W for EA Sports. I love the idea here. Now, let me talk a little bit more about heroes because uh, these cards will work like normal heroes. They said they're going to reveal more than throughout the summer. There's nothing changing here with heroes. They're basically just adding more and they're going to update them earlier on. Now, if you're somebody who is looking to pre-order the Ultimate Edition of FIFA 23, and if you go into the FAQ here, it says even more. If you're having some questions like, hey, um, will foot 23 heroes have the same ratings as their base item and they said all world cup heroes will have improved ratings compared to their base hero items so that's kind of how that works and again that upgrade is november 11th but if you're going to pre-order the ultimate edition right let's go in here pre-order benefits limited time fifa world cup foot hero item so if you pre-order the game before august 22nd that's the deadline date you or we are all going to get a foot hero item on the day that they are upgraded and released, right? And that November 11th date is when the new foot hero World Cup cards will be out in FIFA 23. And that's also the day when we will get our free one if you pre-order the Ultimate Edition. Basically, that's like getting a free promo card on the day that they release. Imagine a promo Friday of like shapeshifters and EA was like, hey, here's a guaranteed shapeshifter pack from the cards that are just arriving in game. That's pretty cool, especially that early in the game. Everybody's going to get a hero card. That is super sick. And that's going to be a lot of fun this fall when that does happen right before the World Cup. So that's a huge W if you're pre-ordering the Ultimate Edition. Something to kind of think about. And I think it makes your Ultimate Edition pre-order just worth it a little bit more. Now, a couple things about heroes. Like I mentioned, this is the World Cup Heroes card design, right? We still have a new card design that is leaked. I'm taking a look at Foot Zone on Twitter. Now, I we, before we've said that Foot Zone's a little bit fraudulent. We've called him Fraud Zone, right? But this guy's actually got some things pretty accurate with some of the leaks that he tweeted out before EA has posted the stuff this last week. So we still take these with a pinch of salt, but he is saying this is the brand new Foot Heroes card design, that this is the um, base version. So it's going to look different than the Ginola that I was showing you. This is the leak for the base version of Heroes. I like that orange. I like that color. And you'll kind of notice this, uh, this design right here. I don't know what it is. It almost looks like an A or like part of a star. Um, that is kind of a constant in a lot of the car designs that we see um, in the FIFA 23, you know, um, reveal information stuff, that sort of like thing is in there a lot. So that's kind of like the basis of the new car designs this next year. And this is the full list of FIFA 23 uh, heroes and icons that are brand new. Some big names in here, right? Marquisio, Donovan, Dirk Kite. There's a lot of great cards. Now, of course, we're going to keep watch on this official Foot Heroes page as EA is probably going to continue to release these every, I don't know, maybe a couple weeks or so. They've got a nice little write-up on all these cards. So it's really, really cool to see EA doing this. And it just sounds like we have a lot more Foot Heroes and icons to come to be released. So that's pretty hype as well. Those are the two biggest things in terms of content, in my opinion. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is this was found in the one of the screenshots from the update. I believe I can even see it in here. Um, we were not expecting to see anything about this, but you can see it right there. You have your coins, you have your FIFA points, and then you have these things like foot stars. And this leak from Foot Zone says they are called foot moments stars. They can be traded in for packs, special cards, and coins. Now, some people have um, let me know that there's stuff like this already in like NBA 2K or Madden Ultimate Team or something like that. Uh, it, you know what almost it seems like to me? It seems like a new form of currency that's like a swap token. Basically, think about it, right? If, you're con if you can trade a, a foot moments star in for a pack, special cards, or coins, 
that to me feels like a kind of a swap token. If you can collect them and then at certain levels of how many you have, you can turn them in for a reward. That's cool, right? And that's kind of, it's different, right? It's a change. So I'm a fan of this. We'll have to see how it gets used and implemented in the game. Um, and we'll see if there's any sort of like paywall behind it too. If EA is trying to, you know, form an extra like revenue source or whatever it is inside of ultimate team we'll have to see but that's cool um i mean all that we can say right now is that's cool and we'll see what we learn more about it in the future but we saw that in the screenshots yesterday when they were talking about leaderboards and stuff and we were like yo that's brand new so that's some new information from yesterday as well just a little bit of like upcoming dates and info if you have not seen this tweet it looks like about once a week we're going to get new updates. They're going to start off with gameplay and high promotion 2 technology on the 27th. They're going to go career mode, match the experience, pro clubs, Volta, and then ultimate team on August 11th. So we still have a couple of weeks until the true ultimate team news are going to be coming out and getting released. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. Um, we also had this screenshot. This is also kind of going around a lot at the moment. This is a free kick. Uh, they're, they're redoing the free kick, which it's cool because, you know, this kind of reminded me, and I used this example on stream yesterday as we kind of switch over and look at gameplay stuff here for a second. This kind of reminded me of like, um, you know, I don't know if you guys have played any like billiards games before where you kind of get to choose when you're about to shoot the ball on the table. You ch you choose a spot on the cue ball where you want to your you want you to make contact right. That's almost what I feel like this is here. You're basically gonna have the football down here on on the pitch, and you're gonna have this little I don't know what it, what you call that like a square or a star, and you're gonna basically depending on where you move that probably controlled by the right stick. That's the different type of free kick that you're gonna take right. It says inside foot curled right now because she's about to take this free kick from that angle. And then it kind of shows you where the ball would go if you'd strike it correctly, your expected XG, your distance, and then it gives you the stats and the player name and position like on the pitch, right? That's cool. I like that. This looks pretty neat. I think it's going to be the same way for penalty kicks as well. Hopefully in the gameplay deep dive that would be this next week, uh, I would imagine that as a new gameplay feature, they would talk about this new set piece format. I like the stats though. I really do. I think it's pretty cool. I love the stats in FIFA. If they keep adding more stats, I don't think anybody would complain at all. So those are some of the biggest details. A couple other things, FIFA 23 ambassadors, Vinny Jr. We've got a lot of guys in here. We also have the addition of some women's footballers, which I think is pretty cool. And they definitely made a pretty big point of including those women footballers in the trailer. There's going to be a men's world cup and a women's world cup mode. And I believe I read it somewhere as well. They're going to have officially licensed uh, women's teams in the kickoff mode. I don't think it's in ultimate team. I think it's in a kickoff mode. We'll have to see. Uh, once we get more information around that, but you've got some big player names in here as FIFA 23 ambassadors, a lot of names returning, but then some new ones. I believe Jack Grealish might be a new one. Kai Havertz, I think is a new name. And even Virgil, I think is a brand new name uh, as a ambassador for this year of FIFA 23. And then a couple of dates to be very interested in. And this is actually going to impact us a lot as we get closer down the line towards FIFA 23. It doesn't seem that the EA Play 10-hour access trial, like we have had in the past, I don't know how many years, you always, had, you always had those 10 hours to kind of play the game. Usually it was like a week before it came out or like five, six days before it came out on the console, even for an early release. This year, the EA Play early access trial and the Ultimate Edition open up on the same day of September 27th. So... Is it really going to be worth it to have EA play this year if you're not getting a 10-hour trial like a few days beforehand? Is that actually not going to get you any kind of like step ahead? So that's something that we're going to have to look at and kind of if this date changes um, as we get closer to the time frame, which is kind of weird that it's the same right now because as this looks, it may not be worth it to buy EA play if your 10-hour access doesn't actually give you any time like before anybody else gets on. And if you're going to get on the same date as people who buy the Ultimate Edition, you might as well buy the Ultimate Edition, right? Which I think a lot of us do anyways, just because of the content that you get because of it. Speaking of that Ultimate Edition, once again, you do get the 4,600 FIFA points just like last year. You get the untradeable ones to watch player, the foot hero, and a couple other items in there. And we'll talk about that as we get closer, of course. Talk about pre-ordering the game, which version may be right for you 
and stuff like that. So that's kind of all the information that we have on FIFA 23 right now. Again, there is more gameplay stuff that we could uncover. Um, as again, we talked about the next gen and the old gen pro clubs is not included in that, which I think is a big bummer. Um, and you know, I was looking forward to playing pro clubs with some of my friends IRL that have Xboxes, but I won't be able to do that. Um, so, you know, the new menu look as well in here, I'll be honest, it looks so similar to FIFA 22 when I saw some of these images. I mean, it does look a little bit different, right? You can see the backgrounds a bit different and stuff, but I just thought it looked so similar to FIFA 22 that was it was not that big of a change in that regard. So a lot of interesting things that we looked at today, a lot of things that we talked about um, regarding FIFA 23. Let me know down in the comments this video how you guys are feeling. I know it was just a little bit of information. I know there was not much to unpack and to look at, but I feel like from the stuff that we learned, there's stuff that we're, we, we have to talk about regarding the market, which we did regarding foot heroes, which is nice to understand and to unpack and unfold. And then I'm just really curious to see the new icons, new heroes that they release and confirm and more information related to the game that we're going to learn in the next couple weeks. So as it comes out, we're going to cover it and continue to talk about it on the channel. So if you enjoyed today's video, smash a thumbs up on it. Comment down below again if you have any questions or thoughts on what we've talked about here today. And of course, subscribe if you are new. It's been Nate the Foot Account, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.